Welcome everybody. Hello, this is Restream Team. We are going to talk about local recordings and how to achieve the maximum quality for your podcasts and videos. Even if you have remote guests, people from all over the place, kind of like me and Matt, we're actually located across the ocean from each other. Oh, yeah. But our recording is going to be crisp and spot on because of this new feature that we are introducing today. So stunning 4K Ultra HD videos and audios for you and all your guests are now possible directly in Restream Studio with the local recordings feature. In this part, I would love to hear you know, like the origin story, <laughs> like okay. how we built this uh, from Matt because he was the product lead on this um, feature. Uh, we had a lot of requests from our, from our customers to, oh, yeah. to build this and people yeah, were this really looking forward. a long forward. time coming. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's um, walk us through the, right. the story. How did that happen? You know, Restream has always had cloud recordings, right? And all your streams are automatically recorded in the cloud. But with the cloud recording, the quality can go down because we are live streaming through WebRTC. And what it does when the uh, network is going uh, dynamically down, it basically um, lowers the, the bit rate uh, of the video, right? Uh, what that means in reality is that it starts dropping frames and it also can lead to stuttering in the audio. And you don't want that. So with local recordings, uh, we basically uh, record everything on the device and we are progressively uploading it to the host. So regardless of how spotty my current connection is and what you might be experiencing, in the uh, end result, in the file, you will really get high quality stuff. The origin of this story was um, that we were really trying to teach the browser to behave like a professional camera rig without melting everyone's computer. While the stream is being recorded in the cloud as a whole video, individual sources, so for example, my camera here and Anya's camera there, would be separate video tracks, isolated tracks, if you will. And uh, local recordings can grab the utmost quality of our current camera devices and progressively upload it and back it up on our Restream service. This is actually a perfect segue to our next kind of call out uh, for uh, this new feature that local uh, recordings basically come with the possibility to record in 4K. But it is not a trivial test to do that because you do need uh, a device, ma mainly the camera, that can capture in such quality. And when it comes to some questions that we got um, from our email campaign, at least I received some uh, emails with people asking, okay, so does 4K recording means 4K streaming? Uh, mm -hmm. Not yet, not at this time, uh, because first of all, most platforms that I know of do not uh, accept the 4K live yeah. content. The only platform I can think of, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, is YouTube uh, that is yeah. capable of, of that kind of quality. Uh, anything else you can think of and that you probably typically stream to, such as LinkedIn, X, Facebook, Twitch, do not uh, accept such a quality yeah, it's for live. HD. Yeah, it's, it's just full HD, so it's 1080p. Uh, however, having the ability to utilize the fullest potential of your device, of your great camera in 4K, to then repurpose the recording into little highlights, clips, snippets, best of episodes, maybe uh, video uploads, and uh, maybe something that you would put on your website. Uh, that is pretty powerful, and you can do it all from one place, from Restream Studio. Uh, exactly. And of course, with, with a little bit of help from, from your producers and editors, uh, but that is now achievable probably the number one thing that you need to think about when you are deciding between adding local recordings or just sticking with cloud is the quality of the video versus the power of your machine, right? That Matt broke that down yeah. a few times earlier, but those are the two main things that you need to think about. Local recordings are best for your um, powerful machines, 4K recordings, uh, and when you have a situation when you do not want to depend on internet. So if you are recording with remote guests and people who are joining from all over the place and their internet might be spotty, the local recording will still be really crisp and good. However, it is going to add load on your system. While cloud recordings basically happen on our servers, but yeah. they do require a higher internet speed and much more stable internet more than anything. So it's not necessarily about like how many, like how high is your speed, it's also how stable it is. Because with cloud recordings, if you are dropping off for some time or you're losing your connection for a certain period of time, you're getting laggy and spotty, maybe you're freezing, maybe your guest is freezing, that will also be reflected on your cloud-only recording. With okay. local recordings, that's not going to happen.
All right, so this what you're looking at here is these are the files that you get when you download. You can see they're MP4s, and I've got these XML files. So I've got one for Final Cut, I've got one for Premiere or, or DaVinci. And I literally, here we go, check this out. This is, you're going to love this. Dun, dun, dun. Bam, done. Those are imported, and it's made me a timeline, and everything is synced. Check this out. There it is. It's all in sync. So I can actually take the... Uh, the show, I've got a main show record. Here it is. Put it onto my timeline here. There we go. So now I can cut between the main show recording and all of my guests. If I needed to, to chop around things, I can just choose whichever camera I want to use. And so anyone that, anyone that knows what they're looking at here is going to be going, oh yeah. And of course, each stem is individual. So there's the main mix down here of the actual recording. And then I can just I can cut around any mistakes. Now, I worked in venture capital uh, podcasting uh, environment, and there would be times where a company would say, wait, I legally can't say that. Like, you need to cut that out. This makes it so easy. I can just cut to the host giving us a noddy and then back to that person. Like, it's so easy to cut around. Absolutely. This is just, it's phenomenal. Here, imagine I had different people turning up into my podcast at different times. This is what it looks like. So this this guest turned up and then this one turned up and then this guy left. This I've mocked this up. This is not genuine. I've just it's just another timeline. But you can see that this was an XML. You saw how quick that was. One other thing, you can multicam this. Of course, all I needed to do would be to nest all of this. But I have a there we go. Once I've got a nest, I can turn that into a multicam, right? Once you've got that as a multicam, I can just switch between Dude, that's so powerful. I want to start with James. He is asking async or sync transfer of the files, meaning do we need to tell our remote guests to stay logged in until the files transferred over to the host? Uh, we kind of covered that a little bit, but just let's give a quick summary. This is a good um, question. No, uh, you don't need to tell uh, the guest to stay logged in. And actually, with Restream Studio, they don't even need to be logged in. So uh, the way Studio works is that you can invite anyone and they really just use a link. They don't need to have an account, and still uh, they their tracks can be locally re recorded and you know synced and transferred to the host. The only time when you might need to have that sort of conversation with the guest is you know again they they left too early for whatever reason and abducted uh, by aliens. Abducted by aliens, exactly. Then if that ever happens. You just send them a link. It's a very simple link. It's something like studio.restreamio/upload, and they go there, um, and it just tells them, you know, your files have been uploaded. You can close this, and that gives the rest of the things to the to the host. Doc from LinkedIn is is asking, is the captured screen share already synced mm -hmm. with the camera footage? Yes. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> this was the shortest one. This is just a, a yes. There is a question about if the upload deletes the local recording. I know the answer to that. I think it's a no, but Matt, um, no, no, no. Uh, it does not delete it. So, uh, so basically, oh, maybe, well, maybe let, well, exactly. Yeah. So if that's on the device, then yes. Do yeah. we sort of clean up okay. after ourselves? Yes, we do. Uh, it only okay. stays there if it's in the incomplete state, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If it's complete, it's no longer necessary, and it doesn't, you know, obviously uh, stay in your storage and keeping uh, space unnecessary. It's, it's not really like saved on the hardware as a recording. It's so to get technical again, but like it's part of the data uh, in the mm -hmm. browser. Uh, but we then progressively upload them to our server, where we stitch them together. And this is how we assemble the recording file. And one of the reasons why we why we like assemble it ourselves is that we assemble different formats of it, right? So we take the mm -hmm. data structure and like at first you get a WebM, but then you can also get a MP4 and so on. So like all those files are really for the host to decide how they want them, when they want them, whether they want them at all, and so on. On that bright note, we are going to say, I'm going to send some hearts to y'all and we work. are going <laughs> we're going to bring in dimitri's dj set again and thank you very much for joining us today cheers thank you